before you boil your beer, what you need to do is you need to give them a good rinse inside and out uh, in the sink with hot water just to make sure there's nothing in them. So just fill them up with a half full of water, put your hand on top, give them a big shake. Just have a look around the bottom to see if there's no sediment and then drop them into a stone on the draining board and then they're ready for the next stage. If your friends are kind enough to provide you with all their empties as well for your bottling, um, some of them might be pretty pretty gunky around the bottom, so you might need to use a bottle brush to get in there and scrub them out, and you may need to sterilise them um, using some sterilising solution. What we're doing now is laying out the bottles, ready to have a measured amount of sugar put in them. And what that does is uh, kickstart the yeast again in the bottles that's left in in the, in the beer from the fermenting bin, and that starts the secondary fermentation. And what that does is essentially puts the, the beer the beer bubbles in the beer. Um, so when you open your lid, you get that lovely ch kind of sound. Okay, now we're ready to bottle. We put the filling valve into the spout of the fermenter. And what that does, that allows you to fill the bottles to the right level and it gives you the right amount of space in the top of the bottle for fermentation. So once that's in, we open up the valve on the ferment. Okay, now the beer's down the valve there. Right at the bottom, you've got sort of the on off switch for this gadget. Basically, you push that up with the bottom of the beer bottle and that'll allow the beer to flow in. So, you take your bottle, push it up, give it a good pop on the bottom, and the beer sort of comes into the bottle. And you want to fill the bottle right up to the top, because when you remove the, the pipe, that creates the space that you want on the top of the bottle, which is about an inch, ready for second fermentation. Once that's done, it's now ready to go on and be, to be capped. Right, the next and final stage of the beer just putting a cap on the bottle. Um, you can get many different types of uh, crown corkers, and this is one of them. Basically all you do, you take your bottle, put your ready to go cap on the top there, drop it underneath the corker in the middle, bring the mechanism down, push hard, and away you go. And then that seals the top of the bottle. Now, two things for this. I always like to turn my bottles upside down. One, that shows that the sugar in the bottom has just been dissolved into the brew. And two, it also checks the seal to make sure it isn't leaking. Once you've done that, put it into your styrene box and away you go. It's always good to label your beer so you know what's in the bottle. So whatever you decided, in this case we're going to put a P on it for porter. And that's that. And we're also going to date the box so we know when we bottled it. Um, so I believe it's the 27th today. So that's the 27th of April. Here in Australia, the majority of your beer bottles um, are twist tops. Now, to create a satisfactory seal with your crown coat on the bottle, you need to have the right kind of capping machine. Um, the little handheld jobs that you hit on with a mallet basically doesn't apply enough pressure to mold the cap to the screw thread there. Um, and if that's the case, you'll get obviously leakage, possibly bottle explosion, and your beer is just going to go bad. When you've finished drinking your beer um, in the rain, because it's Australia, um, one way, a very easy way to keep your bottles clean for when you want to refill them again, is to give them a rinse. So collect all the bottles that you've got. Just take them over to the sink. Give them a shake and a wash. That just gets rid of any sediment and rubbish in the bottom that nasty will sort of like to grow on. And then leave them upside down in a styrene or a crate somewhere. And leaving them upside down stops the dust getting in them as well. 